So in order to make this effect, we're going to need two clips. The first clip is the water drop shot that you're going to use. Now this can be whatever you like. It can be moving or it could even be a splash. It doesn't really matter as long as it's a water drop of some sort. Now the second shot can also be whatever you like. It doesn't really matter. But one thing I have tried to do here is match the colors. So I've got two shots that are quite green which helps just blend them together. So if your shot's blue, try and find maybe a second shot that's a little blue to help match those two together. Let's take our water drop shot and drag this into a new composition. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just gonna to go to the start, select my pen tool and draw a very quick mask that goes around the edge of my water drop here. Now we need to track this into the shot if your shot is moving. Otherwise you could just do some simple keyframe animation by using the position on the mask to do that. And then with that mask selected, I'm gonna come over to my tracker panel here and just track forward. And this is just going to track that position of that mask over our water drop here. All right, so that's about long enough. We don't need it for the entire clip. I just need it for this first little bit here. Now I'm gonna come down to the mask settings and I want to make this be subtract and I'm also going to give this a very slight feather and the great thing is I can control the size of that mask I'm just going to drag this down a little bit give it a bit more of an edge feather so we have that mask drawn over the top of our bubble so now what I want to do is just drag in our next clip here so it sits underneath now the thing with this clip is because the top shot or the shot with the water droplet on it is moving around we need to track these two together so it looks like they're basically positioned or stuck together so a quick way of doing this is with that water drop layer selected or whatever your top layer is i'm going to come over here and just hit track motion also just want to activate the rotation now I'm just gonna scale these up and drag these apart so we can get some good tracking information here. And I'm just gonna track backwards and then I'm just gonna track forwards as well. Again, we don't need to do this for the entire clip, we just need it for the first section where we're going to see through that droplet. Okay, so now what I want to do is just create a new null object and apply that tracking data to that. So I'm just gonna edit target, select my null, and then just hit apply. And when I hit apply, I wanna apply the X and Y. Now back at the start here with that drone clip, what I'm going to do is now parent that to that null object. And that should stick our video on our layer. Now you can see there's a little bit of movement on that background layer and that's because we need to freeze frame it before we start doing the zoom in. So one thing I'm going to do with my clip here is I'm just going to right click and I'm going to come over to reverse layer. Now the reason for that is because when the camera zooms through the bubble, I want the drone shot to be moving forward. So you only need to do that if your drone shots say in reverse. And then what I'm going to do with this first bit selected here is I'm going to duplicate that layer and then I'm going to right click and go down to time and freeze frame. Now what I'm going to do is move these right across here because I want the zoom to wherever we're going to start that zoom transition. So I want to give it a little bit of an in point here. So maybe somewhere about there and then drag backwards on this. So that's just going to freeze frame that layer there. Now what I can do is I can take both of those clips and just pre-compose those by coming up to layer down to pre-compose. And again, we need to select our null there to make sure it's tracked into our scene. And the other thing I want to do here is also scale this down and position it inside our water droplet here. So I'm trying to position it roughly so it lines up nicely with our water drop here. So that looks pretty good. And then you can see where it starts. Okay, the next part is I want to control the zooming of this shot. So the way we can do this is create a new null object and I'm going to parent this null to that top null. And I also want to parent the water drop layer to that top layer. So we're controlling the entire shot with that layer now. So now we can create a position keyframe here and also a scale keyframe. I'm gonna move along the timeline as long as I want that transition to be. So if you want it to be faster, you can create a shorter transition. 
and then just zoom in here onto that shot to line up with that clip. And then to get rid of the water bubble, what we're going to do is I'm going to come down to my mask settings and I'm going to create an expansion mask keyframe here and another one here. And I want to expand that mask in the opposite direction. So we kind of revere or we kind of remove that mask in the background there. At the moment, that zoom is not very smooth. I want to smooth that entire transition out. I can select both of these, make these ones easy ease. And I'm also going to select these back ones and make them easy ease out. Then I can select the graph editor and we can start messing around with these to smooth out that transition. So we kind of zoom into it like that. The other thing is we still got a bit of that camera shake going on on that transition. So what I can do is I'm going to come back to this null, which is where we have all that tracking information. And I want to just delete the keyframes for where I want that camera shake to essentially stop. So at that transition point, we want to get rid of that camera shake. The other thing I can do is also control the speed of that transition by bringing this in. I'm also going to delete more of these keyframes back here and also come down to the mask expansion here. Drag this back, drag this forward slightly just to hide the edges of that transition. And the other thing we can do is also just move these two clips over very slightly here, just where the freeze frame is transitioning into our shot. So it's freeze frame through the first part and then it transitions nicely in here. Now, another thing I did on my original composition was I also added a bit of distortion as the camera's flying through that bubble or that water drop. And I also added a little bit of color correction. So I just right clicked and created a new adjustment layer. And with that adjustment layer, I came up to effect down to color correction and I added lumetri color. And I made some adjustments by adding some faded film and some split toning. Now I dragged up on the faded film here just to give it less of a contrast look. And then with my shadows here, I gave it a little bit of green in the shadows and a little bit of yellowy green here for the highlights. Now you can adjust the intensity of that faded film look fit you on the keyboard, I can bring up those keyframes. And as it transitions through, I'm going to bring these back to zero and I'm going to reset the shadow and tint look back here to my original colors. So I reset this to make it match to my original shot here. So it transitions, you can see as I turn this on and off, just what it's doing there, it's just helping basically blend those two shots together. The other thing I did here was turn on motion blur for all of those layers so that we get some nice motion blur as it's transitioning through. And I can also bring in maybe these colors here, this color adjustment very slightly, because we want it to basically be on that transition point as it's transitioning through. So now we're ready to add that slight distortion effect for the bubble as the camera's sort of flying through that water drop. Now, there are a few different ways we can go about this, and I want to show you the way that I ended up doing it, and also another way of doing it as well. Ultimately, the type of footage you're using will determine how good your results are going to be with each method. So the one method that I ended up using was I came over here to my effects and presets panel with that layer selected and I searched for the wave warp effect and just dragged that on. And I also added the lens distortion, the CC lens effect and also dragged that on. Now I'm just gonna turn off the CC lens just for this first little bit so we can make some adjustments here. And what I'm gonna do is move across to where right on that transition point. And what I did up here is I changed my wave width to be 200. Now that will control basically the width of the wave effects. You can see what it's doing there. I found that to get the best results, you want this to be quite wide. So 200 is a good number. And I also created a keyframe here for the wave height. And this is how we're gonna control that effect, turning it on and off. 
just gonna hit you on the keyboard to bring up those keyframes. I'm just gonna create another keyframe here, which again is zero. And in the middle, I wanna create a keyframe that's say about 20. Now you can see what that's doing here. It's adding this effect as it's transitioning through. Now I can readjust the position of these keyframes. I can also make them easy ease. And I can also scale this up or down depending on the look that I'm going for. So again, these numbers will depend on the resolution of your footage and it'll also depend on the type of footage you're using. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to turn on the lens distortion effect and I want to create keyframes that line up with this same effect that we were just working on. So what I do is I scale this size right up to 500 here and create a keyframe for that. Hit you to bring up those keyframes. And then for that middle keyframe, what we're going to do is drop this down to be about 200 and then scale this back up to 500 here at the end. I'm also going to select all of these and make them easy ease. And you can see the effect that it's having on our footage, it's just adding this very slight sort of distortion. I might even just speed these up by bringing them closer together because we want the effect to be quite subtle, but also fast as the camera's sort of flying through. Now that's the way that I ended up doing it for my video, but I wanna show you another way that might work better for the footage that you're using. I want to come back over to effects and presets and I want to search for turbulent displace. And I'm just gonna drag that onto that layer. Now what the turbulent displace does is if you know anything about basically distortion maps, it basically adds a very black and white image over the top and it distorts the image based on that sort of fractal noise that it's presenting inside of After Effects over your footage. Now it's all happening in the background. You don't see that map, but that's essentially what After Effects is doing. Now I found here that you can use the Turbulence Smoother to kind of get more of that distorted look. And you can see by adjusting the amount here, we're getting a distortion effect playing out. Now, if I was to create a keyframe and then move across and create another keyframe, we would get a distortion effect happening as the camera was flying through. So another thing to keep in mind is if you scale this right up, again, we're replicating what we were doing before with that wave warp by creating larger amounts or the, a further width on the overall map which is creating a more subtle overall effect over the image. If you scale this right down the opposite way, you'll see you'll get a very sort of jagged edges as it's, as it's applying that effect at a much smaller scale. Now again, that'll come down to the type of footage you have will depend on the exact numbers that you end up using. But I recommend at least trying that method for yours because you might find that that will work a little bit better for you. So there you go, that's how I created this water drop transition. If you like this video, you can give it a thumbs up. If you also like this video, you can check out more videos over here on the side of screen, where I've got a video playlist of tutorials just like this one. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.